All right, guys, in this video, we're going to be going over um, how you can uh, basically, if you have a game, right, and you have two um, different game modes uh, and the amount of player changes, okay, from five players to eight players, um, and you need, uh, you want to make like a cutscene at the end of a match, so, but you need all the, let's say you have a bull value. And all of your players, and you need that bull value to be true before you run that cutscene. Okay, so we're gonna make that situation real quick. Um, I don't know if that made sense to you guys, but whatever. So we already have a script open. We're gonna make it happen. We're just gonna say, uh, 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 game modes equals table five and then six so we actually can just do this five five and an eight okay um local random game mode equals um math or equals game modes um math dot random one hashtag game modes okay so this is going to pick either five or eight we don't know so now what we're going to do is we're going to say actually we need to run this in inside of our our function or whatever okay so let's just make a while loop task dot wait um just so we can you know have this be a thing cut um so we're going to have boom and what we're going to do here is we are going to make a game.players.playerAdded function. Um, we'll connect function player. And we are going to um, create an instance. So local full value equals instance dot new full value. Full value dot value equals false. Full value, it's just going to be named full value, okay? All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to. Um, Parent it. We got to parent the bull value. Bull value dot parent uh, equals player. Okay, so we're just gonna parent it to the player. Um, and yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. All right. So now what we're gonna do is so now we're getting a random game mode, and all this is is a number of players. All this is is a number of players. Okay. Um. So we actually need, and we don't have the amount of players. We're not going to be able to test this, but we'll, we'll be able to test it. I'll come up with a way. So anyways, so what we're going to do, okay? So now we have our five or eight players, right? We have our bull values being added to the, every player that's in the game. So what we're going to do here is let's say the game mode's running. The bull values are being set to true. This is what we're gonna do, okay? So local player in pairs game dot players get players, okay? So now we're gonna say um, local uh, bull value equals player um, find first child bull value. Okay, and so if bull value is equal to true and not, or we can just say if bull value and not table dot find. So we're going to create another table here. Okay, and we're going to say um, local has finished. We'll just say has finished. So the bull values, this is going to be our has finished table, and this is going to be um, 
basically, if the bull value, if we set the bull value to true, has finished, they're going to be in a table called has finished. All right, so has finished. If bull value equals true and not has finished player, then we're going to um, table.insert has finished player. Um, and then we're going to say else if um, we're going to say full value equals false, um, then continue. Um, all right, so boom, there we go. If has finished, if hashtag has finished is equal to random game mode, okay, then um, what we're going to do is, um, I'm just going to put a weight here. So this is how we're going to test. I'm going to put a weight 10, and then we're going to set this bull value to true. Bull value equals true. And then I'm going to just, for this testing purposes, testing purposes, I'm going to, um, set random game mode equals to one because it's just going to be us in the testing phase. Okay. So if ha if the length of has finished is equal to the number of players in our game mode. Okay. Um, if it's equal to that, then we're going to run whatever function. If it's a cut scene and fire remote event to clients or um or run function on uh yeah no yeah fire remote event to clients okay yeah that's what we're gonna do okay and so i'm gonna show you how to do that but just to let you just to test it to see if this works i'm gonna go into um what am i doing what am i doing what am i doing Game four, we're gonna run another loop. We're gonna say player dot character dot humanoid dot health health equals negative sixteen. So all right, in ten seconds this should work and we should be um we should be dead, pretty much. Let's check to see if we have our bull value. Uh, it's just called value. Is it just called value? Let's see if it at least gets set to true. It doesn't even get set to true. And name it bull value. Wait 10, bull value equals true. We're going to tasks.spawn this um, this while loop just in case. Um, you shouldn't have to, but I'm just going to anyways, because why not? Okay. So we got our bull value. Oh, dot value. Okay, we have to set our dot value to true. Dot value is equal to true. All right. So now it should work. Let's test it to see. It should work now. All right, our value gets set to true, but this guy is still 
alive. So if hashtag finished has finished, it will that if bull value if bull value equals true and not table dot find. Oh, if bull value equals false. Oh, if bull value equals true and not table dot find. Else, if bull value equals false. Then um, continue, and then we need to do another else if. So, else if bull value equals wait, if bull value equals false. Yeah, I think this should work. Let me let me just hold on a second. All right, so <clears throat> we are looping through all of the players, and we're saying, okay, we found the bull value. So we can say we print. I'm just going to run it. So print found bull value, okay? If bull value is equal to true and not table that find. If bull value is equal to true and not table dot find, then table dot insert has finished player. Else if bull value equals false. Continue. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Continue. Okay, so print has finished. All right, so let's test these prints out and see what's wrong. Found bull value, found bull value. We should be getting, um, it's being set, it just got set to true and it's not, it's not, oh, okay, bull value dot value. I always forget to run that. So we do need to say bull value dot value to make sure, just like, just like up there, we had to do that. So yeah, so this should work then. Boom, and we entered the table and it killed us. All right, so it works. All right, so now let's say if we had a remote event, what are we gonna do? Um, how are we gonna send it? Well, this is what we're gonna do, okay? We're gonna still loop through the players like we are now. And what we're gonna do, instead of looping through all the players in the game, so actually we're gonna need to store all the players in a game that enter a game mode we need to store those players inside of a table because that's actually how we're going to be looping through this as well okay so let's say um game modes so what we could do right here is just make some blank data so uh game mode one equals table Game mode two equals table. All right, so now we're going to have this table, okay? So now what I'm gonna do to test this out is I'm actually going to insert uh, this, this player into game mode one. But what you would wanna do is when you enter a game mode, when the players enter a game mode, each player should be entered into that specific game mode table. Okay, so then that's how you would also keep track of the length as well. So here's what we're going to do, okay? You would still want this um you would still want this this table to keep track of whose bull value is true or not. But what we're going to do is table dot insert um game mode 1 player Oh, game modes. Game modes. Dot game mode one. All right, there we go. 
So we're going to be entering them into that, and then we're going to loop through game modes dot game mode one. Okay, we're going to be looping through that game mode one table. Okay, and then we're going to say if has finished is equal to hashtag uh, game modes dot game mode one. Then and now let's get our remote event. I know this tutorial is like really jank and all over the place, but whatever. Remote event equals game.replicated storage. Wait for child. Remote event. Remote event. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to say remote event fire client. Okay. Player. Boom. And this is our cutscene. Let's imagine we have a cutscene. This is our cutscene remote event, okay? We're going to fire this for all the players in. We also have to update this. Game modes dot game mode one. All right, so that's how you would do it, okay? So you would have a game mode, whatever game mode gets picked, right? Um, and how many ever players get put into that? You want to store those players inside of a table that are in that game, specific game mode, okay? Then what we're doing is we're looping through all the players in the game mode. And we're saying if they have the bull value and their bull value is true and they're not in the tape in the has finished table, then we're going to put them in the has finished table. If the bull value is false, we're just going to continue the for loop. We're not going to do anything. Then at the end of our function, we're going to say if has finished, so uh, the length of uh, our has finished table, meaning like the players that bull value is set to true, is equal to the amount of players that are in our game mode. Okay, that's what this hashtag is for, the length of a table. Then that's when we're going to run our little cutscene or whatever. All right, so let's test this and see if it works. Oops, what's here? Oh, yeah. We're going to get rid of this. We don't, we don't even need this anymore. So we're just going to get rid of it. This little, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, we don't need that anymore. All right, cool. So found bull value, it's printing our table, nothing's happening. Boom, we got added into uh, the table, okay? So, well, we didn't obviously have anything. Um, what I could do here is I could like just make a little text label or just a frame. Actually, we'll just do this. And then on the local script, we will, I like to put in local. We'll do this the, the, the crazy toxic way where we don't have any freaking values. So we'll say local remote event equals game dot replicated storage wait for child event and we'll say remote event dot on client event connect function and then we'll say um game dot players dot local player dot player gy dot screen gy dot frame Visible is equal to true. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to set the visible property to false over here. All right. So now let's run it. Let's see what happens. All our characters are uh, like there's no characters, like all our players in the game. Boom. There you go. All right. So run it back real quick.
what we're simulating here, okay, and this is obviously not the best practice to do a lot of this stuff, but what we're simulating here, and I don't even know if we need this task.spawn. I don't think we do. Let's test it without it because I don't think we need it. And obviously, like, yeah, we did not need the task.spawn. All right, so what we're doing here is we're simulating, let's say you have two game modes, okay? Um, you would store the players, okay, that enter the game mode into a ta into a table. That table then keeps track of all the players that are in that table or in that game mode. So you have a length, a specific length of players. If it's five, if it's eight, if it's fifteen, if it's twenty, whatever it is you're going to be able to have a length, okay? However many players are in that table, you're going to have that length. So now what you're doing is you are um, checking, you're running through that table, okay, for that game mode. So game modes dot game mode one, for example, you're, run, you're, run, you're looping through that table and you're checking their bull value, and if it's true, and they're not in our has finished or has bull value equal to true table, then we're going to insert them into that table. If their bull value is false, we're just going to continue the for loop. We're not going to do anything. After the for loop, we have a function that checks if the length of has finished is the length of however many players are in that game mode. Then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through every player in that game mode and we're going to fire our cutscene. Okay. So I hope that made sense. I know this was super jank, but I just threw this together. Um, this video was requested. So yeah, if you guys have any other uh, suggestions for videos uh, programming I can make in the future, just let me know in the comments, any goofy ideas, whatever it is. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.